warning. Swearing may be used on this stream cause we're grown. If you are easily offended, tighten up. Content provided on this stream is intended for entertainment purposes only. It should not be construed as legal or medical advice, and should not be relied upon or acted upon, without retaining proper counsel. No copyright infringement and no commercial benefits intended. All copyright belongs to rightful owners. With that mouthful being said, buckle up. So, what are you going to uh, perform for us today, Ev? Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from a book oh! uh, by a good, Wait. a good writer. For, sorry. Wait, before you start, before you start, coming on to reading. Okay, so Everell is revered for his voice. He is a voiceover artist. Um, and this might not mean anything to people on Facebook or on Twitter, but trust me, people on Twitch are going to love this shiz, okay? So Ev has voiced for The Witcher and Sacred uh -huh. 3. This is video game royalty up in this house. Okay, <laughs> okay, Ev, back to you, back to you. <laughs> I was just going to say, I'm going to read from this book, if you can see it. To, to live, live it is, is to, to know it, it yeah. It written by Alfred Williams and Maria Brown. Um, the book is about Alfred Williams, and it tells the story of a man who came from Jamaica. He was born um, in the early 20th century around, well, I think it was, well, he was a young kid in the 1920s. So, yeah, I mean, it was quite a while back. Um, after he died, um, Maria Brown wanted to sort of like create something more than just a book so i ended up getting involved with him and we created a production um and we toured that all over the country and to be honest i'd say that production was probably my first true foray as a professional actor being out on the road and yeah the story itself has so much so much emotional attachment to me not just because of it being what it was as a theatre piece, but because of the history of what this man's talking about. So I just want to drop a little bit of that in. Um, first off, I'm just going to read Alfred's basic introduction to the book. And my accent's going to change, because I am a Yorkshireman. But I'm also oh, tough. God, he's one of those lovies. Okay. No, no it's, not, it's not going love. It's, it's not that kind of book. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, when you're ready, Ev. Reason I'm writing this book now is I everlasting looking back at 1925, remembering things that happen, what life like as I progress through. When I think of this book, I know just what must go in. Maybe things from my life, some use to young people. It's not a lot I can do. I'm an ordinary man. But what I know, I did not learn in books. I did learn from living it. And this book, I do not think it's my book. I just tell what I know. And I tell it for my son and who born here in England. I would like him to know what hell older ones were meeting. One day, my son and all other kids might be really stuck in bad times. I want my son to know where he's from so that he can remember and say, my family, they meet it hard. I can put up a fight against this. It's nothing near what they went through. I only tell the truth in this book, truth as it is in my memory. I do not remember exact days or exact distances between two places, but I remember what happened and I tell what happened. When I think about my life, I've been sucking salt through a wooden spoon. Try and understand what that like. When you're five years old, somebody give you salt jar. Put wooden spoon in, add a end, a spoon go in your mouth. Then they say, start sucking. Now I'm nearly 70. And I've been sucking salt every day of my life. Plenty of people will say, that's funny. That's a joke. Let them try Take salt and spoon and start to suck. Then you know what my life feels like. 
sometimes there's a heel come down on the neck of people of a country. The problem we had in the West Indies, I think, is the same problem you get in this country. And what sort of problems you think they have in South America countries? When I was young in the West Indies, it were a bit different from here. But as far as I know and realize, the heel that we people in Jamaica was under, English people was under it just the same. But as I come to know this, every country have its rich and poor, its first class, second class, and third class. Every country I know have the poverty stricken. But the poverty stricken here in England now, they like the middle class to the poverty stricken in Jamaica when I was a young boy. That heel was on the neck as far back as I can remember. Say, I start about 1925, when I was a little boy. No use me writing about when I was born. You can't tell anybody about when you were born. You retain nothing. I don't know nothing. I don't know how things were in Jamaica at the time of my birth. But when I look back to when I was a child, I see the pressures that was handed out to, to the West Indies. It was hell. I don't know if a book has so long to tell this story as that pressure. Maybe it need everybody write a book. Today, kids are thinking it terrible hard over a year, and things are getting tighter here. But by God, it like heaven to what I knew. Kids think it all flow for the parents like it flow for them. But when I young, we get no help, no DHSS, no welfare state, and no labor exchange. We had none. So back in my young days in Jamaica, the country is run by two men who were brothers, and they fight and argue like a Margaret Thatcher and Neil Kinnock. But for all they say, they're brothers. All this political fighting is just on the outside. They're doing it to fool us. They're just the same as each other. Rich enough people, middle class people, people wanting power and position. I don't write about these people. People who rule countries. I don't know about these people. And these people don't know about me. I tell you First, about the work I do as a kid. Later, I tell you about the school work I never do. I work for my father, and I work hard every day. Life wasn't heaven for my father. He had a horse, cow, goat, some field. But horse and such was cheap, and you didn't get a lot of money for them like you might now. So, my father had some hard times, but he was a cruel man. When I am about seven years old, which is when I start school, I had to get up around five o'clock each morning and walk three miles to where my father pastured his horse for the night. I take the horse from the pasture, then I ride them to the common land, which is near my home. If he leave the horse on his pasture all the time, the feed there wouldn't be enough for them. Father also had pig, goat and cow, and these animals require attention. I get home about 8 o'clock and get dressed, tidy up, and go to school. Well, so my mother think. I am home again about 12 and ready for something to eat. School not far away, but I sometimes go further than school. Afternoon school go on till 4 o'clock and I race home fast as I can. Time to catch the horses. On the common line, I find my father's horse, maybe two I catch. The others will follow. I'm only seven, but me alone take the horses as well, pull water round mountainside where I live. Wells were seven to twenty fathoms deep. For a kid pulling water from these wells, it's hard work. I throw water in trough, and in this way, water may be five head of horse. Then I must take the horse to the, the three miles back to my father's pasture, and me way back home. I collect the goats and bring them home with me. It's not safe to leave goats out far from the house. And then I go home and wait for food, and it's, say, about half past six at night.
what hurt me more than anything. That old man of mine, from the time I know him, I have a, a father. He never stretched out his hand with as much as a mint ball to give me as a bit of encouragement. It still hurt me to this year's and I continue this work with only the assistance and encouragement of my mother until I am 14. About then I start to realize that one or two pieces of clothes I have are wearing away fast. Mother, keep her best to keep them on my back. But father never show any concern. At 16, I left school and work in the animals and the fields each day. I'm cultivating with my dad. He made no changes, nothing as encouragement, no extra clothing. It's the same old story. No clothes except if you are stand up in and working. Food I never shut up, but money, there is none. There you go. <laughs> uh, there we go, ladies and gentlemen, April Walsh. I see, um, I see, I see, I see Lewis Thank has gone to Jamaica. <laughs> Lewis, is, <laughs> Lewis, <laughs> Lewis has gone to Jamaica Ain't in that time. You feel love, brother. <laughs> oh, no, respect each and every time. Send a massive shout out to you and your great work. And as an experienced actor, how have we seen your artistry evolved over the changing time? Um, you know, the reality is it's a weird journey because there's been, um, there's stops, starts, Sometimes it looks like the world's just opening up, then all of a sudden it closes up. I mean, take the corona thing going on right now. You know, it, you know I mean, um, really positive. Oh, there's no need for that. <laughs> that? Um, but in its reality, I, I think you know, art is, is, is a thing which... Uh, you know, people look and say, oh, it's just about being professional and whatever. But my reality is saying, well, you know, Everybody has an artist in them. You know, it's, that, it's, it's part of that child. And I think as we get older, we, we, we suppress the child more and more. And it's like, you know, for your own health and benefit, you should allow that child to play every now and again. You know, because that's, that, that's the energy of who we are as people. That's where we come from. You know, the, the truth of who we were was when we were little. You know, as we get older, we learn how to cover up our things in a way that we can pretend to be whatever we are, but the nature of who we are is A trained actor, time. dear, trained actor. Yeah. <laughs> and so was I. I went to a dodgy drama school. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying, I'm saying you're, you're a trained artist. That's why you know about all this, you know, the masks that we wear every day and stuff. Yeah, but I think my journey started before... The journey of, of, of being a creative was before that I before I actually even became an actor. Yeah, yeah. It was it was it was it was because I mean coming from backgrounds like ours, we are not um, viewed as oh well yeah, well, yeah you, you've got something to tell. But this is something what I has been in me since I was a little kid, and you know right. the, the right. opportunity to express and tell stories, and yeah, I mean those experiences help helping to move people, either making them laugh or making them see see the world from a different view, from the, a different view from their own perspectives, uh, to me was one of the most magical things I could be involved with. That's um, that's definitely why I, I, I've tried to create this platform because, you know, as black northerners in particular, black northern creatives, like it's almost like we don't exist and we do exist and we do yeah. have stories that we want to tell and we do have people that want to listen, you know? Yeah, no, I think what you're doing is an absolutely brilliant thing. Yeah, um, I was going to say in the, in the darkness of this corona, it's 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 it's, op it's opened up the door. Who is that? Can't, 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 Cardi B. Um, it's it's given people an opportunity to actually step back a little from from the 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 the, the race of life. And start to look at you know, you know life and 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 the values of what what it is in life, um, and yeah, you know I mean I I hope that people see a lot more love and caring. I know that's not always the case because there's you know what I mean, with the positives of life, there's also the negatives. But I hope within this darkness, people find the opportunities of finding themselves 
and growing from this to become stronger people. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, you're you revered for your dulcet tones, but before you go, I just want you to um, quickly tell people, because I always get asked this question and it's hard to answer, um, how you get into voice, voice acting. Um, it's one of the things that, luckily, we can do at home now. We can work from home. But um, how does one how does one get into voice acting, dear? Um, it's to be truthful. I would say you know what I mean. I mean not, to me, the voice acting is all part and parcel of all of what I do, performance wise and everything else. Um, it's about not being afraid. Um, you you know what I mean you see you see courses get involved you see people who are doing things talk to them communicate with them uh, yeah I mean a lot of my opportunities have come via sort of like um, a, an introduction or something like that but then because of how we we make that connection through that and we push forward um, things have come from that yeah. I mean, I mean, I will be truthful. I'm probably not one of the best um, audition actors. You know, go for an audition, and yeah, you know, I mean, sometimes I'm flat. I'm dyslexic, so I, I don't read that brilliant. So you know, it, it's getting into that reality of going. Don't be afraid of who and what you are. You know, it, it, it's like saying, you know, if you, you've got the creativity. You, you've got to. You've got to start with a spark, but you have to work. The more you work on it, the more you build. And the more my experiences have come looking back, not going forward, because I never know what's in front of me. It's when I've looked back, I'm going, Jesus, I'm an actor. I've done the things that I dreamt I wanted to do. Yeah, so this is the journey. It's, you don't look to where you're going, just look at where you are and start making those first steps and don't be afraid. Thank you, Also, with. Um, with for example, it being said that the industry is in London, but then we see kind of London artists navigate or kind of UK artists navigate or find themselves find in America where... <laughs> the, the, what do you mean? BAFTA yeah. stands for Black Actors F off to America? Step change. <laughs> <laughs> how, how did you find the industry um, growing up? And if you're from Yorkshire, you know, you might be aiming at London or America or the world, but what, what opportunities is kind of or what tips can you give up and coming oh, there, there are a world of you know we you, we've got to be you have to look I mean I mean my reality is, is like I went to London did a bit didn't work out came back here to I, I live in Leeds um got involved with um, a theatre company in Bradford um theatre in the mill um Big up back, in the in the mill. Yeah, and Ian. back in the early 2000s and you know that that was that was that was where I truly started um, to find um, my creative ability and opportunities came from that. Um, I mean, there's many there's many different things going on. There's workshops and so forth like that. People just can't be afraid and saying, "Well, you're waiting for it to come to you," because it don't it don't come. I, I, I mean, I'm an old man. I don't look it, but I am. And, <laughs> I've I've had a, I've had a couple of years of sitting there waiting, <laughs> so you know what I mean. In those realities, it's like you know you 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 basically you, you can't be afraid if 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 this is something you want to do, you have to put yourself out there and you have to allow yourself to be susceptible to uh, I use the word pain, but rejection that's the right word because this is a business full of rejection for every one job you get. You may have gone through 10, 20, where you got rejected. So it's, it's not about, you know what I mean? It's a perseverance game. Yeah. Well, thank um, you. Sorry, oh. sorry, Lou, go on. No, no, I was just going to say, what, what were some of the early development brands or shows that you saw being worked on from the beginning and then now they're at a stage where they might be on a bigger platform or like yourselves as actors and actresses, but I guess what I'm getting at is what re what references are there um, that you have, you know, where you're this one, or we've got this, for example, is that 
back to um, Mill again. Um, when I went there, that was in the early 2000s, it was a uni that basically, it still is a university theatre. Um, and what they created, out of, I mean, some of, some of, some of the big com- theatre companies in this region, like Slung Law and so forth like that, came out of that melting pot of theatre in the mill. Um, that was a place where they got their opportunity to to gestate and and grow their their creative their creative language, which they're using today. And it's I think the hardest thing is trying to sort of like go, oh, what's what's the best thing to get in for the future? Because nobody knows what the future. That's what I'm saying. Nobody knows what the future is. Yeah, and, and so it's it's about actually following following the desire, but being passionate about what it is you're doing while you're following it. And with the closing down of local hubs, for example, um, what's local to me is uh, what was Host Media Centre, which is now the Leeds Media Centre, which mm-hmm. saw talent drawn to it and kind of, or it was only there for the talent that, you know, it, it was to represent. Um, but with community centres and um, kind of these and within the communities goes down. Where, where is the, where, where's the next place that people can go and grow their artistry? And well, well, can I just jump in here, Ev? Well, Leeds is, Leeds is now yeah. kind of the hub of um, the, uh, the digital creative world now, I guess, or the digital creative world, the digital creative UK. You know, you've got Channel 4 there now, um, I know BBC are in Manchester, but so many things yeah. are going to come to Leeds oh, now because of plus. yeah. So so yes, yeah, so Leeds is the is the place, right? But how important is grassroots oh. to those? You know how, where where the grassroots right. are going to be developed because they these these establishments and institutions that you might have mentioned might be looking for the polished or the finished version. If right. somebody's practicing the craft, and you know. Liddell Bryant, Shane Walsh, you, you know. It's, it's, yeah, but, yeah, you have to use, you have, it's back to those things. I was not an academic kid. Um, I went to college, got kicked out of two, um, won a scholarship to that last one. Should have got kicked out of that, but finished it. And it's, it, it's that reality about going, you know, Leeds City College um, has a very good creative department, some very Good, I mean, people I know, good lecturers and stuff like that who, who work in from design. Um, they've got, you know I mean, they've just built a, a new state of the arts um, theatre. Well, the whole building just next to the West Yorkshire Play- Leeds Playhouse. Let me say it right. Yeah, yeah, Leeds, Leeds Playhouse, Playhouse now. Um, which um, I think, which I think, which I'm on the commercial for. Um, but I also think that's important because when Bretton Hall was yes. no more, that left a massive hole. That made, yes, a very big gap. Yeah. Um, but you know what I mean? It, it's like the, there are there are still opportunities out there. Um, like it's the, that thing, it, especially in this day and age. You know what I mean? If if you because you know I mean? there's creativity and there's commercial creativity and there's, there's so many different avenues of of creativity. You know, it, it's like I say to people: if you get into this wanting to be rich, I tell you not to not to get involved because the reality is, you know what I mean? It's the very few people who actually make it and make serious money out of it, yeah. But if it's your passion, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's going to give it's going to give you a lot of pain, but it's also going to give you a hell of a lot of love, yeah. You know? But it, you have to go through the whole thing, and and each person's journey is not the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Big up to um, current creators. On the films like with the series, the massive show to him. I just because I did mention him, but <laughs> I'm after context. But all right, Ev. Big up, you, though, ladies and gentlemen, Everell. Mr. Everell Walsh. Real pleasure. I love to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, Ev. Um, see, hopefully, hopefully, see you soon. You know what I mean? Hopefully. Yeah. All right, take care. Stay blessed. Bye, bye, bye.